If you were to guess what kind of cookies I would make based on The Walking Dead, what would they be? Blood cookies. Blood cookies. <laughs> Zombie cookies. And stuffed. <laughs> like what post-apocalyptic ingredients you would use that people would want to eat? I have no idea. Okay, so my first thought was like maybe they had people in them, but then I thought <laughs> that was like pretty unlikely. Yes, no. Um, but then I thought, are these the cookies that Carol made? Yes. Yes! Well done. <laughs> yeah, so acorn and beet cookies. Okay. <laughs> Today I'm making Carol's beet and acorn cookies. Beets and acorns together, it's a crazy combination. But I made it work and I did it with the help of science. So my name is Paul Tran, and this is Paul Tran, Bigger Man. In the zombie apocalypse, baking is incredibly hard. They don't have easy access to all-purpose flour or plain white flour or access to refined sugars. In watching the television show, we do know that Carol replaced her flour for acorns, and she replaced sugar for canned sliced beets. We also know that she used applesauce instead of eggs, and that she was rationed a quarter bar of chocolate. She also grabbed water chestnuts, arrowroot starch, and something that was maybe cacao nibs that wasn't really well explained. The first version that I tried of these cookies were terrible. I basically threw everything into a bowl and then hoped for the best. It was gross, it was terrible, it was too hard. I got all the proportions wrong. It was awful. But science is on our side. I figured out how to balance the ingredients by basically taking some of the meaty, chunky parts from the beet out. So to do that, I needed to make a beet caramel. So I boiled the beets and the water chestnuts for 30 to 45 minutes. That drains the beets of sugar and makes the water chestnuts mushy like mashed potatoes. I removed the beets and reduced the liquid until it became a beet caramel. Once all the water evaporates, a pure bright red beet caramel remains in its place. I drained the water chestnuts, then mashed them. Once they were cooled to room temperature, I could make the cookies. So take 65 grams of, or a third cup of shortening, 86 milliliters or a quarter cup of the beet caramel, and cream those together until you get one nice color. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 to 75 degrees Celsius or gas mark 4. This recipe makes a dozen cookies. Add in 15 grams or a tablespoon of applesauce. Add in 15 grams or a tablespoon of mashed water chestnuts and mix those all well together. Add 78 grams or two thirds cup of acorn flour. I found this online and you can also find it in an Asian grocery store. I mixed in eight grams or a tablespoon of arrowroot starch and a quarter teaspoon of salt and whisked those together. I put in half of this flour mixture into the mix and then mixed it until it's just combined. And then I added the other half, but stopped it right before it could all be combined together. I took 99 grams or a quarter bar of chocolate. I'm adding this into the mix and then I'm using the rubber spatula to be able to finish mixing it. And then I'm using a tablespoon scoop to portion out my cookies. After eight to nine minutes, the cookies will be ready. I have some friends who are fans of The Walking Dead. Let's see how they like them. Do you remember the episode where Carol baked cookies and walked around, um, handing them out, so and also talked about? You made acorn cookies? Acorn and beet cookies. Oh, wow, okay, okay. <laughs> Exciting! Oh, okay. Yeah. Acorns. Acorns, because they don't have flour. Oh, so she ground up the acorns and made it into flour? Yeah. Whenever you watch the episodes, because there's two episodes where she talks about these things, mm -hmm. and I I scoured The Walking Dead to find out more details and ingredients <laughs> to just to see. And there's two oh. episodes, one in season five and one in season six. Okay. So <laughs> uh, there's one where she talks to a group of ladies and they say, well, I eat a mash of beans and 
some cocoa um, powder in a little sweetener, and I wouldn't have done that before the zombies, but sure. I like it now. Okay. And she's, Carol talks about how she uses applesauce instead of eggs. Right, right. And you see her in the pantry, like in the yeah. sixth season. She takes out a can of beets, a can of water chestnuts, <laughs> um, a thing of arrowroot powder, and then cacao nibs. I think they're cacao nibs. Mm -hmm. um, so there's like cocoa, possibly. Yeah. And so because she could only be rationed a quarter stick um, or a quarter of a bar of, of a bar chocolate, chocolate. Yeah. I used that as my basis to make the recipe. Okay. Oh, cool. And so did they pu did ANC publish this recipe or did you figure this one out? I didn't figure it out. I did make one version that's pretty terrible. Yeah. And if y'all really want it, I can make it for you. But <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. I tried to science the heck out of it to figure out how do I get the best out of it that I possibly can. Apparently, if you boil acorns for about three hours to get rid of all the tannin, then so like all that bitterness, then it you could then dry them out and grind them up. Huh. Instead of melting the chocolate throughout, uh -huh. I decided to keep it in chunks because I tried to keep it as red as possible just because it's the walking dead. So <laughs> nice, okay. Oh this is exciting. <laughs> Have you tried these yet? I've not. This is my first okay. try. This is exciting. Mm. I like the texture. Yay, cheers. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. That feels not terribly sweet. They're good. <laughs> Why are you? You don't think so? No, I just actually crushed it. <laughs> it's very delicate. Mm-hmm. Super delicate. No, this is... And it's not only zombie apocalypse good. <laughs> like, I would really eat these. <laughs> Definitely has like a grainy, not texture grainy, but like grain grainy flavor. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's, it, it tastes like it's healthy. <laughs> tastes like it's healthy? No, like it's a whole wheat cookie. Yeah, yes, that's a great descriptor. It's actually really good. I really like it. It's really, how is, how is it so soft? Oh, because I stopped it right as it would start to be completely mm -hmm. mixed and then I take it off and then I take a spatula and I finish mixing the wow. ground. Yay! <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. Good job. And I also like your Martian reference you threw in there. Hmm? <laughs> Although you cleaned up science the heck out of it. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess technically these are vegan? No dairy, no eggs. No dairy, no meat. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yep. And then I would also assume gluten free because it's no flour. Well, um, it's acorn flour. And there's arrowroot, so yeah, it'd be gluten free. Oh, see, all you crazy vegans out there. There you go. I like y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they're as good as they are. <laughs> I am glad they're as good as they are. <laughs> I like it because most cookies are too sweet, and then you eat one or two and you're like, oh, well, at least for me, and then I'm done. Yeah. But no, there's no weird aftertaste. I would actually eat this cookie. <laughs> I am eating this cookie. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was amazing. <laughs> and you are also great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you want to taste the caramel? Sure. It's very sweet, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's like candy. That works. I can make a beet candy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why not? So you would serve this at a Walking Dead party? I would serve, well, I don't, yeah, as long as I didn't have to make my own acorn flour. Oh, yeah. Although, in the apocalypse, I might think about it. You get to eat as many cookies as you want. I'll have one more, just to yeah. demonstrate that I really do like them. <laughs> well, that's and why- it's not just an act. Well, yeah, I, that's why I always have people on, because mm -hmm. I'm like, there's one thing when I'm eating, but when somebody else is eating, mm -hmm. you... Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is, this is fantastic. See, look, and I'm eating a second one. That means that they're actually good. Because if they weren't good, I would have been, like, done with the first one. He would tell us. Mm, yes, I would. I another one. Okay, <laughs> this is my last one. Carol, you did Carol proud. 
tall. I should have I should have worn a floral cardigan over a button down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll go look in my closet when I get home. <laughs> I come out with a floral blouse with the cardigan. <laughs> do you? I don't. <laughs> I have to hit, hit the thrift store. I do like Mia Carroll, but it's only because, like, she's a tank. <laughs> <laughs> like, when she shows up, you know things are about to go down. Yeah. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> mm hmm. There are cookies. And she's crazy. And she'll teach little kids how to kill. She's a nut. Stare at the flowers. <laughs> do you have a gas oven? No. You use electric and you get it just right. <laughs> Well, I was a professional. <laughs> I'm so happy this is a su success. Yay! <laughs> like, I'm so, so excited. I would package these up and offer them to like the store downstairs and be like, hey, you should sell these to all those crazy vegans. Cause you know, a lot of these uppity gays are like, ooh, I'm gonna be a vegan now. Cool. Yeah, I think you would actually make money off of this. <laughs> well, the recipe's in the show notes. <laughs> You're giving away the recipe for free? Yeah. No, you need to, you all need to pay money for this recipe. You should put like a sign up. Or subscribe. There you go. <laughs> subscribe, right. like the videos, like the page. And then you can get his recipe. Mm, yeah, I approve. These are good.